to another Real Talk Reaction. This one's for Ted Lasso, Season 3, Episode Number 7. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. You, you, you know why, okay? It's for the algorithm, people. Let's go. All right, a couple comments from the last episode, starting with Corey, who says, I think Isaac's breakdown over them not being able to agree was the angriest we've ever seen Isaac. He went past the point of throwing chairs at TVs all the way to Shakespearean monologue. Mm. I love Rebecca's pointed uh, comment to Roy about where Keely was going, somewhere that believes they deserve her. I love that, too. That was a big standout yeah. line for me, too. She knows Keely and Roy belong together, and she's returning the favor of the romantic advice he gave her last season. Nice. Don't settle for fine. Uh, then Terry says, it's all gonna be, it's, no, yeah, it's <laughs> all gonna be all right now. I agree. I agree. That was the, that was the turning point. Uh, then we have uh, Nate saying, if you remember back in season one, Ted gave the team the option of staying in and watching a movie or having a pillow fight. The team chose watching a movie, and Ted said, one day you'll pick the pillow fight and never go back. <laughs> now we flash forward to this episode, and all episode we hear Sam suggest the team just stay in and watch a movie, only for the team to ultimately end with a huge pillow fight. feel like this show... This shows how much closer the team has got over the last three years. Yeah. Oh, great yeah. insight, Nate. Thanks for sharing. That just elevated all that for me. And then two more comments, starting with executive producer Jeremy, who says, I really love this episode. It was like the episode where we watched Beard's Night Out, but it was everyone else's. I really love Jamie teaching Roy how to ride a bike. I thought that was great. I love that so much. I also love Rebecca and the Dutch stranger. I thought that was well done. The audience seems split on if they want him back or not. Some really do, some don't. I liked him, so if he came back, that would be great. But if he didn't, that would be fine, too, because everything they did in this episode was great, and it could be left at that. I totally agree. I would be good either way. If he shows up again, cool. If he doesn't, I think that was a beautiful night, yeah. and I think that was really what Rebecca needed, and probably him, too. Um, and that's okay if it's just one perfect night. Yeah. I love it. Uh, when Trent saw Colin kissing his boyfriend, as I said in the comments of the episode, I was worried they were implying that Trent was going to out Colin for a story. And like Trent, oh, and I like Trent, so I didn't want that. But over the next few episodes, I started wondering if instead Trent was gay and he was going to try to connect with Colin. I'm relieved that that's where it ended up going. Plus, I really loved their discussion. Yeah. I also loved Higgins' jazz club stuff, the team ending up staying at the hotel all night, and 10... Ted fighting inspiration. Yeah. It was a great episode and great reaction. I look forward to the next one. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. All right, and then Terry comes through to say, in my uh, my honest opinion, this episode, Sunflowers, is likely the greatest and most important of the entire series. Simply, this episode is the turn. And from this point, win or lose, everything. And everyone, whether with bounty or bruises, everything's going to be all right now. Damn, I love this show. Yeah. Same. So they, they be hitting the marks. They be, oh, it was really refreshing too because, like we were saying, it was a bit of like m missing the mark almost because the team is like not in its best position either. Uh -huh. So, like, the show felt like that too. So, it's organically feel like the show was struggling because the team is and then have this like pivot, Terry, like you said. I'm just hyped because I know the rest of the season's about to be. Yeah. I'm gonna cry. I'm so ready for it though. All right, let's show in the next episode right now. Now that's a cup of coffee. For strong. Good day. I got something. Ooh, I love soft things. <laughs> what is this? It's just a pair of jeans. Sister Sensibility. Oh, I love this book. I love the movie more, day. <laughs> Wait, is this like a first edition or something? Yeah. And it's signed. No. Keely, 
You go, girl. Jane Austen. <laughs> <laughs> Did you destroy a priceless artifact just to make me up? One, it wasn't priceless, it was actually very expensive. Two, I can get very jealous and I hate the idea of you regifting that. And three, no, I didn't. That is all her. And she really wants you to go, girl, so. <laughs> You better go, girl. Oh, I'll go. <laughs> Watch me. Come here. Thank you. Hey, Cindy. How are you? How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm not seeing someone. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Sam. Good person. <sighs> okay. I have a favor to ask. Yeah. We have an open table on Friday night. <laughs> oh, you they're being serious. No, Friday no night. the restaurant is booked for months. The waiting list is a lie. We tell people. Oh, okay, we have a very special guest coming. So, I need a real Yota for one. Uh, I'll take care of it. Take care of it. <sighs> She'll be first. Okay. Oh, oh, fuck you! If you. Oh. 1974 World Cup, the tiny <clears throat> country of the Netherlands came out of nowhere and made it all the way to the World Cup final, playing the home team, heavily favored Germany. Those Dutch hippies scored before the Germans even touched the ball. Yeah, but Holland lost that game. Correct. But along the way, they won the hearts of fans all around the world. With a style of play, dare I say a philosophy, called Total Football, which coincidentally Coach dreamed up in a barbecue sauce related hallucination just last week. No, it's true, but hey, it's not about me. Go on, keep shining. The best player on that team and the godfather of total football was this guy. Can anyone tell me who this is? It's Tim Robinson from I think you should leave. No, it is Dutch football legend Johan Kraft. It's pronounced Kraft. My apologies. With total football, Johan Kraft took his small club Ajax to three straight European titles. Now he later became a coach. First at Ajax, and then he took total football to Barcelona, where he won the Spanish championship four years in a row. Now the central cog of that team was an industrious but brilliant midfielder named Josep Guardiola, a.k.a. Pep. Look at that head of hair. God had to tell you a way to just balance things out. Pep became a coach as well, playing his own version <laughs> of total football that he took to Barcelona and Bayern Munich, eventually landing at our great white whale, Manchester City, where he briefly coached a uh, very talented young player until that beautiful dumb dumb quit to go do a reality show. I was wrong. Total football is about constant movement. Players are no longer in set positions. Defenders are free to attack. Attackers are trusted to defend. It's about taking risks and supporting each other's choices. Like when your friend wears something new and outside of his comfort zone, and instead of ignoring it, everybody. Um, I'm just dropping this off. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's very lovely. Oh, really? Yeah, of course, go. Oh, that's very lovely. I never would have uh, thought that you liked books. I, I mean, um, that you collect first editions. Oh, no, I don't. Hey, these sideways tales, man. No, no. What a very nice gift to receive from your boss. She's not really my boss, your right? Boss. Who's helping me execute my vision? Oh, it must be nice to have such a, a generous friend that um, delivers expensive gifts to your place of work. No, 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 she gave it to me this morning when we had breakfast together. Oh. Coffee. We had, um, we had a coffee together at a coffee shop, but we didn't arrive together. We came from separate places and we met there. She was late, actually. Well, I had a warm yogurt on the tube in my pyjamas. You take the tube in your pyjamas? Yes, sometimes, yes, when I want to beat the rush. And, um, and then I just get changed in the, in the toilets when I get here. Oh, smart. Miss Jones, got a breath? Miss Jones just be dropping like... Hey. Trippy, hey. <clears throat> Put that core back in there. <laughs> Stop playing with me. Good. Hey, 
sorry. Yes, Wonderkind. Um, can you set a reminder for tomorrow at 7 p.m. for Nicole's birthday dinner? Thank you. Okay. Your reminder is set for tomorrow at 7. Sorry. Yes, Wonderkind. How can you tell if a girl likes you or has just been nice to you? You can't. I mean, I hope no, you set that reminder for seven before seven. Because then it's going to be late. Marriage is a big commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Not talking about Peggy. Oh. Still. Wait, what magazine? Yeah, but you're the one who has to pay for it. Yeah, that's right. You okay, mate? No. We win this place is pet. We lose. It's like this. I actually prefer it. You can finally hear yourself thinking here. Fuck off. Hey Lasso. We wanted to apologize. What for? For getting all soft on you. Yeah. We humanized you and lost all objectivity. The only reason why farmers don't name their livestock. And why we don't know the names of Basil's brother's girlfriends anymore. Because of male war. Exactly. So we're going to backslide a little bit. Now what the fuck are you doing to our team, wanker? Okay. Well, no, 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 hold on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, fellas. Why you come watch train tomorrow? See for yourselves. We ain't running a chocolate factory or Deutsche Bank. We got nothing to hide from y'all. See you Chocolate factory or a Deutsche Bank. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm definitely going to take a shower. You've got to do one, Matt. Yeah, definitely. Coach, you should have smart to me by the end of your practices. It's 13. We're just barring for a little while. I know. Anyway. We get some marriage and pegging on. Yeah, they don't take a shower. Yeah, it's all about shower. <laughs> <laughs> The hottest coach in the league! <laughs> Thank you. I want a lot of money off you a lot. So, keep it up, please. <laughs> Table for one? Um, no, that's just passing. Uh, is Jade working today? You know? No, she's off Tuesdays. She goes to school. Or feeds her mum. I don't listen, so I don't really know. I don't listen. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> just say that I said hello. Um, actually, you know, don't, don't say anything. Um, actually, no, do. Uh, say... <laughs> Jamie, Jamie? Oh. That's probably because the boy wants him, like, it's part of his dream. Hey, coach. 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 I'm not like that, okay. sis. I'm not. I just want to make sure I have this Somebody right. Can't turn me into that You're going to change tactics at this stage in the season and replace it with a totally new method that the boys are clearly struggling to understand. Yep. And you think this is a good idea? Mm. Well, Trent, we're asking you. It's kind of like taking a hike with Robert Frost. Could go either way. Hmm? Get the fuck out of my chair. <laughs> you did a good job. Take. Austrian Napoleon.
love bomb. Love bomb. It's too much, man. It's too much. Okay, Great House, today we're talking about number three, awareness. When you play total football, you got to know your hey, teammates are doing it all the time. Constant it might movement requires constant concentration, yeah? So if Sam makes a run through the center, y'all got to shift, right? And if Danny moves back on defense, that means what? Hell, it's frozen over. <laughs> no, it means you got to move up and support Danny's choice. Okay, any questions so far? Uh, yeah, coach, what's with the red string? Ah, great question. In Japanese culture, they have a myth where they believe that all soulmates are connected by an invisible red string. And those strings are attached to each of their little fingers. Hmm? Okay, so why is it tied around our dicks? Yeah, well, you know, that was Roy's idea. Uh, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure the thought behind it is that it is nearly impossible to not be fully aware of what your teammate's doing when y'all got a rope tied around your ding dong. All right about that, Roy? Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we're going to get at this right now. We're going to do a full scrimmage and half speed. And I don't want to see them strings get too loose. And I'll leave it up to y'all to make sure they don't get too tight. Do not leave my side. Shall we? No, oh, they tied to each other. Yeah, they're all tied together. Oh, you got working unison there. What are you doing? You got to keep up. Oh, you need to communicate, really, what you have to do. Okay, this is a bit. You can't go crazy, man. Don't forget. I was just trying to see if you guys want to be a mediocre player than a, but like a monumental bigot. Mm. <sighs> they going to the tap. Oh my god, he's doing the whole wedding thing? I got you something. I don't want it. Sorry. I'm sure whatever it is, it's incredibly thoughtful and mind-blowingly generous. But I don't know. Kitty, I just got you No, a... I don't even want to know what it is. No, nope. I just want to hang out one time where it doesn't feel like sweeping me off my feet. Okay. Sorry for sweeping you off your feet. No, no, hey, I didn't mean to. No, it's okay. I get it. It's uh, absolutely what I'm doing. I'm coming on too fast, too strong. I'm, I'm sorry, I'll back off. I'm love bombing you. Just a little bit. It was a croissant. I got you a croissant. It's a fresh croissant, though. It's like a fresh croissant. You're incredible. If you think it's buttery, you've got to let me do something for you every once in a while. No, I don't really want to eat it. Deal? It's like a scone. Thank you. But it better be fucking amazing. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's, it's the last one, I swear. It's the last one. It's jewelry. Good. It's really, really good question. <laughs> what if I was so fucking hungry? I would have beat the shit out of that thing and I would have broke some of uh, my teeth. And I guess we've been talking about cancer. Oh god, is it gonna get a car or something? Guys, dicks to one guy's dick. Yeah. <laughs> Roy. That was a one-shot deal, Roy. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure we cooked that whole bird already, Coach. Huh. Mm. Sorry. I was really wanting to do it. Again. So I had a, I had a good one. I this was correct. This number four. The octopus yes, is what I call it. You haven't said what it is yet, no man. But you know what it is. I don't actually. Mm -hmm. What about you, Coach? I'm agnostic. Mm -hmm. Roy. I don't know. Fucking know. Number four has yet to reveal itself. There isn't a number four? Like the man once said, sometimes you gotta leave space to let really God like walk you through. I like part of the ah, season and so enjoy that. So number four's gone. Oh, no, I don't think so. Coach? I'm an atheist. Mm -hmm. Roy? 
Fucking I'm not. Mm. Alright, thank you. Ten minutes late, yeah, that's gonna be our handle, alright? The fuck's wrong with you? I'll tell you what's wrong. The world is full of evil people who do shitty yeah. things, but I can't deal with that right now because I have to go and kick a little ball around. What we those same people love me for? Either do I fuck up, or, or I miss a penalty, or, or I, I just have to fight back, and, I, and then they're just gonna wanna ship me back where I fucking came from. Yeah. Samuel. Oh. Man, when you did show up. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you use that shit, boy. <laughs> 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 it's fucking that we laughing at, mate, but it's true. It's so true, man. It's true. It's so long. This forest was able to buy a castle. What? I mean, it's in Scunthorpe, but still, a castle. Well, I'm taking Jack out tonight. Mm. And if she tries to pay, then I will give her. You'll give her what? Just the tip. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, Leslie. May I present? Mr. Obasanya. Ah, oh, Rebecca Welton. Lovely to finally meet you. Likewise. Samuel has told me so much about you. Oh, he did, did he? Has he? Yes, he. He has. Cool. Richmond have admired in a run of poor form, and you have to applaud Ted Lasso's efforts to try something new. But this, what's the word I'm looking for, Chris? Sucks, Arlo. So it is. He's so dry too. Great, they're tackling themselves now. With Richmond literally running into each other, the gunner's mouth accounts for attack. Here's a through ball. Luckily, we're going to time with this quartet of stand up comedians known as the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. And along with their observational humor, fun banter, and numerous catchphrases, they also possess the four most common types of facial hair. Now, Ron White, who was my favorite, he was clean shaven. That's one way to go. But then he had Larry the Cable Guy. He had himself a big old bushy goatee. And Bill Engvall, he also had a goatee, actually. But he was, um, you know, smaller and uh, more manicured, not touching the sides here. Awesome news of Van Dyke. Thank you, Coach. And then you had Jeff Foxworthy, of course, who uh, had a mustache. So check it out. I went ahead and rolled the dice and grew myself one of them big, bushy Cable Guy goatees. And I thought I looked great. Until Coach Beard here took me aside Rise, I was about to walk down the aisle and told me something I need to hear. Remember what you said to me? Your goatee makes it look like you ate out Bigfoot's butthole. That's right. Here's Dixon. He fails to Tart. Tart to Opisania. Over to Hughes. Tart again. To Makadu in the midfield. Over to Rojas. Rojas drops it back to Tart. He takes a long one down to Bumpercats. Bumpercats to Goodman. Goodman over yeah. to Tart in the box. Oh, the back heel. Boom! Ooh, and that's yeah, how you yo, do yo. it. That's how you do it. That was so smooth. You come out of there. Then it got to play through him, baby. You got to play through him. Really all the way down yeah. the field. That's how you do it. That's it, man. There we go. There we go. There we go. Woo! Yeah, I get through a lot of shitty out there before he gets his bed out here back back in the back. Showing signs of life. We still lost, but that was the best we played this entire Ted. time. It's going to work. Great. What is? Tough football. Okay. And I'll tell you why. I met Sir Rebecca. Oh no. Did you make things weird? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go and see the restaurant? I would love to. Oh, this looks nice. That is not the same. <gasps> Did they fix huh? it for him? Are they fixing it for him? The 
the whole tea and came to the face of the rest of it. Oh, hey, is this tea? The surprise is ruined. Well, we all just asked ourselves. What does this situation need? Uh, yes. We thought your situation needed us. What does this situation need? Yeah, because of the fixture window this morning. Then you get a discount, though, because he's a prick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I brought some glasses of wine from my personal cellar. Not the best stuff, obviously, but still very, very good. I'm a bumble car, she's trying to fix your sign. Neon signs are just a bunch of illegal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was episode 37. Man, um, Ted Lasso, this episode right here, man. You know, they're talking about love bums on here. This one right here was just a feel-good bum that they did in this episode. It was just from beginning to end. I mean, it, it just know how to do it for us anyway. You know, I mean, you, you, you hit all the right things, right? You got some, you got some, some drama in there. You got some funny in there. You got some playfulness in there. And then you just got a lot of whole bunch of good-heartedness. That you just wrap that shit all up together, and it it, it 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 is just a wonderful thing to see, and I love it. I mean, it just that's right up our alley right there. I mean, that's just it's it's just a good time watching good people do good things, and just good things happening <laughs> to just feel like it's still real life, right? Because yeah, stuff do stuff does go wrong in real life as well, but how do you work through that? Is what the show shows us every single time, right? How do you overcome that? And like the, the, the mantra in here was, one of them was, what does this situation call for? Yeah, what does the situation need? Yeah. And I like that. I'm going to start using that in there. You know, sometimes you just got to take a step back. What does this situation need? Look at the situation and say, what does this situation need right now? And then boom! That gives you time to come up with a way to damn figure it out and, and make it better instead of just jumping over the deep end and going doing something crazy. So I really enjoyed that one right there. Everybody had their moment to shine in here, uh, storyline wise, and I appreciate that. Even the whole season right here, they've been giving everybody something to have a story about. Even even our prick um, Nathan, right? You still kind of feel for him a little bit. It's really hard not to when right. he's, he's being like, himself and being self just remember. cutie pie, but that's going to be short-lived, right? Because he's about to get back into um, Nathan villain mode when we about to almost about to play them anyway. But I do love the, the team finally tr getting it and Jamie stepping up and being like finally having this moment and Trent calling out the whole thing and saying this is what it was all the way from the beginning. This is exactly what it was leading to anyway. It was inevitable. Total and there it football. is, total football, and perfectly wrapped up. Kudos to the writers and creators, because this episode right here summed it up perfectly, and it worked 1,000% for me. Let's go. Um, so I am to a total dork, too. Trent's uh, monologue and his breakdown and, like, his excitement <laughs> is literally my spirit animal. Like, that's the way I feel about Ted Lasso all three seasons mm -hmm. and to see Trent just be like I don't even care what the next thing is it's all good it's gonna work I believe mm -hmm. you I just loved that he was like giddy and I like that uh you know uh Roy called him you know a dork and uh 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 Ted's like but he's our dork and I'm like I'm your dork too Ted yeah. um because I feel exactly the same way about this show similarly to to all the things that you were saying um, but yeah, so many big takeaways from this episode. I love, I love, love, love that Jamie had an opportunity to like show his leadership and he's been working so quietly with Roy and he's been, he's been biting his tongue so often this season with everything that he was annoyed with, with, uh, the other player that I can't remember his name, like he tried his best not to be an asshole and not to say the asshole thing. And like, he even like prefaced it before saying it now. Like, I don't want y'all to think I'm just being an asshole again. And I love how yeah. they all like flipped him off, which is from last season, which gave me the feels. And ultimately like, ugh, his acting in that moment was so great. Cause then he was like, do you mind if I use the board? And the fact that everybody got up immediately and followed him over there and he looked back and he was like, oh, you guys actually want to hear what I have to say? Yeah. Just speaks to like how much the team respects him. And like, he's been working towards a position of authority and leadership. And like, 
It was just such a genuine moment for his character, and again, I've said this 17,000 times, and I'm going to continue to say it, but what they did with his character, specifically from a development standpoint, just blows me away. And the fact that he was like, I don't need to be the person up front scoring, I can be the person that's pulling us along throughout the field. Like, yeah. work through me. I'm not the end point. I'm yeah. the person that's, I'm the support person. I want to support all of you and let somebody else score, which I love so much because yeah. he's like training to be the best. And this is the best. If you can play in the center field and you can be the person that moves the ball from the back end to the Let's front end. It. Like, oh, and the fact that he said it, even when, uh, Ted and you know they gave him a card was like you just gotta be in the front scoring he's like that's not where you're not utilizing me the best that's not where I gotta be like I don't have to be the person scoring like use me use me and through me we will do good I just love it so much yeah, I can't get enough yeah. of it it was so good my other biggest takeaway is Roy be completely Ted Lassoed. He's so Ted Lassoed now that he has catchphrases and he's chiming in with words and he can't stand it but he can't resist. And I love it so much. It's so cute. It's the cutest thing of all time. Yeah. So I absolutely adore that as well. Um, with Keely and Jack and Rebecca, it definitely has this like feeling of like, I'm not sure how this is going to play out because I, I can see Rebecca clearly has anxiety but she's going to trust Keely's choices because she sees a lot being played out in the way that Rupert treated her like the love bombing and all of that um, and I feel I feel similarly like it was a lot a lot like it was a lot a lot so quick um, but I think Keely did a good job of like setting boundaries and speaking to it so we'll have to see how that plays out but it's difficult too when like Obviously, I want her to get back with Roy, <laughs> so like mm -hmm. I want to hold space for this relationship um, And I felt like they were trying to show us that, that there were in fact red flags But it seems like they worked that out. So maybe that's not a this season thing um, But that's interesting to continue to see how it plays out everything though with Sam Sam's one of my favorite characters as you guys know forever um, one having his dad show up I just, I was going to lose it right there. When yeah. he went over to say daddy because he was so frustrated about everything with the, the, the politics. Which again, kudos to the show for including that as well. And like bringing that realism back with a show that can be just so inspiring and uplifting. It's good that they include the realness of what the world can be and is sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I just genuinely love Sam as a person. Like his soul is so beautiful. The fact that like even in dark situations he doesn't go to a dark place he's constantly trying to be the bigger and better person like wouldn't even flick them off in the text message he does you right, know thumb downs right, right. like he's such a sweetie pie um but then rebecca rebecca meeting his dad i thought that was a great moment too but then the team man coming through to like i can't even get i'm gonna lose it but showing up at the restaurant to like support Sam and be, to your point, using that phrase as far as what does this situation need and then just mm -hmm. showing up, like, stop it, I can't even. And then them just having this incredible night, just hanging out at Sam's restaurant with Sam's dad's cooking. It's just all the feels, man. It's all the dang feels. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just so excited to continue to see how the season progresses because, as always, super invested and it's just makes me feel better about life and yeah. that says a lot yeah. about a show that's a big weight to carry for a show but they deliver on that every single time and it's just refreshing and i just really appreciate this show so much yeah. so can't wait for the next one all right well look thank you guys again for watching another real talk reaction for ted lasso season three episode seven and until next time